so uh, doing a little battery desulfating today. Um, these are my dad's old uh, solar power batteries there uh, for off the grid power. They're big bastards. I don't know if you can read this. 6 volt, 460 amp hours. These aren't made for marine use. These are made specifically for solar batteries. Um, but over 10 years, they become sulfated quite a bit. Uh, they don't hold near the charts they're supposed to, so I got them desulfating. Now, you might want to, you might be able to see bubbling quite well, actually. That's a good sign. That means that uh, they're desulfating and releasing hydrogen which means they're charging now I had these batteries as well as four others on the system and it was showing fully charged and it wasn't charging them up they were showing full voltage so that it was tricking the charger so what I had to do is this old charger here it's some old bastard god knows where the hell it came from been through the war and back but that's fine it has no regulator it won't stop if that battery gets the full charge so it just keeps dumping power which is exactly what I need and it just happens to have a 6 volt 10 amp thing 10 amps ain't quite enough for these batteries uh, I think it's uh, 5 amps for every 100 amp hours is best so it should be like a 20 25 watt uh, system but this is close enough it'll work uh, it's gonna take a while but it's bubbling along as you can saw it's bubbling well and uh, hopefully I'll get these all charged up I don't know if you can see the bubbling but it's actually it's picked up quite a bit it wasn't bubbling near that much but the specific gravity is coming up started off these were deep in the red the specific gravity they're getting into the white now soon they'll be into the green there are specific measurements these batteries are supposed to be at 1265 but they are well they started at 1150 so that's not so good uh, not so good at all uh, it's way down so uh, like I said, just blasting them and just kind of let them charge probably for close to a week each and uh, see how that works. And assuming it does work, I may actually try a bigger charger to get it, the specific gravity up a little more uh, until they start the charger starts shutting off, in which case I will then hook it to this charger and uh, trickle charge it for, you know, eternity. Anyways, uh, you might notice... If you've seen some of my recent vids, this place is a lot different again. I got my wall done. All the pegboards up. The tools are all organized. Scary as that is. Even this drawer set here. Actually got stuff in all those drawer sets. Labeled so I can find it. Scary as that is. All my tools under the bench everything's organized there I went through everything that I had my dad helped me and finally got all this shit done it took hours um, as well got the rest of the garage cleaned up my redneck snowplow didn't fare so well I uh, ran into the wall <laughs> that's another story got my sleds up out of the way wheelchairs wheeling a little bit of garbage I didn't clean up yet I still got the suspension mower. I am going to get that going soon. Um, it's not a high priority, but maybe some point soon. I, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I think I might hook it to an alternator or something like that. Maybe see if I can't make like a uh, redneck generator or something out of it. And also there's this. Uh, you'll see my video. Or you might have seen my video with this in it. Uh, I am trying to fix it. Uh, what it ended up being is the fuel cock has a like a rubber o-ring and that rubber o-ring is gone to hell it doesn't like the rest of the Chinese gaskets it breaks down in gas after a couple years 
so I'm going to have to probably replace that or I may even take the tank off my four wheeler right there it's a crazy generator tank it's three times the size of what's on there and I might actually hook that up in place of it and because uh, I'm switching out the tank on my four wheeler and then, then that'll last you know I can run that for days on one tank which is kind of awesome if I need it but uh other than that, i uh, also got a shelf built for my stereo there, so that's pretty cool. Um, I needed to do that now, just got to mount the speakers up over the, the windows there. And then that'll be done. Slowly making progress, I got more stuff organized over there in my shelves. Uh, just a lot of putting stuff away, kind of got overwhelmed, I had so much stuff in here and I hadn't cleaned it in a long time and then I had to give my, get rid of that wood stove which really sucked and it was cold out here so it's been warm the last couple of days so I've kind of been invigorated to actually do something and uh, slowly getting there, slowly getting there uh, hopefully I'm going to soon get back into this generator like I said, get that going and then uh, I also got to get this going it, I was stupid and I should have known it's a Honda and it uh, won't run without proper gas. Now, I should know this because every time I've had a Honda, they won't run unless it's got proper gas in it, like, you know, enough or whatever. But, uh, sorry, uh, I was distracted. Somebody was outside. But, uh, yeah, uh, like I said, it should run proper with proper gas. I don't think the flow was quite right coming out of the tank. I don't know if I didn't have enough for enough head pressure to build up to push it out fast enough or what, but it was bogging out and everything. I took the carb off and cleaned it and then realized the carb's clean and realized it was a fuel issue. So once I figured that out, I, it's pretty much a no-brainer. I can fix that. It's easy enough to fix. I should have known. It's a Honda. All my other bikes from my old videos, you might remember the 250s I had. Well, those things, uh, the only thing they ever suffered from was frozen gas tanks and uh, carburetors with the, when they got a bit of water in them. Otherwise, you know, they ran forever. But anyways, just thought I'd do a quick update video. Uh, you know, tell you a bit about the desulfation. And uh, at the start of the process... Uh, it's going to be quite an adventure. These batteries are hefty too. They're 117 pounds each, which uh, doesn't make them easy to move. Uh, but I got them on a rubber mat, so they're not directly on concrete. But yeah, anyways, till next time. Peace.